Welcome to Backboard Banter on the board with your hosts, Matt Middleton and Kevin Rayner, where the banter's as ferocious LeBron James, my friend. Man, the guy's 38, and when it counts the most, he is still the best player on the floor, not even close. It's kind of wild, you know, we're waiting for the transition to happen for AD to take over as this team, and they're really just one-two punching it right now. But yeah, LeBron... He was definitely not showing his age in that series, closing it out, making it to another conference finals. Absolute masterclass from LeBron, let's be honest. Bro, I think it is AD's team at this point, but LeBron can still, you know, throw that cape on when they need him at, at his best and, and go get it done. I mean, to have a 39-9 and game is yeah. ridiculous. We love it, man. Like, we love it ridiculous. from LeBron. We'll get into that series later. Let's throw it back to our takes from last week. Me, you know, mine was a bit of a, you know, dart into the wind, trying to throw some hope out for Toronto fans. The Leafs got one. They got a victory. Couldn't get all of them, you know. A little bit of controversy left and right, but at the end of the day, maybe the Leafs fans, maybe the franchise is just cursed at this point. Buddy, if feels like they're really cursed because yeah. honestly like i've never we went through this last week that was a goal the second goal that was disallowed that was totally a goal i've seen the nhl call it multiple times and then again there's a penalty on the ot goal as soon as you touch that guy's stick with your glove it's a penalty like you there's no if and or buts about it like i just i don't understand how that happened it's it's been a wild time in the NHL for sure. There's some craziness. Who knows? Maybe the Panthers are just gonna piss everybody off and go all the way. Edmonton's out now, so I'm sad too. You know, Canadian hockey fans, uh, tears over here. But hey, Matt, at least you got it right. Denver, Boston. It looks like it might be happening for this final for you. Still alive, my friend. Still alive. Boston came all the way back. Uh, like I thought they would. Crazy. You know, they did it last year against Milwaukee, did it again this year against Philadelphia. I just really didn't trust Philadelphia. I mean, think about it. They they kind of showed you know? they kind of showed why yeah. you, you don't want to have faith in them, why you don't want to trust them, right? And now we're in this really interesting point. We're here on a Tuesday recording because why not get it out of the way before this, you know, conference final round starts here? But Let's roll back a little bit. Let's talk about the coach roulette. Have a little bit of Raptors chat here because crazy enough, Matt and I were sitting here a few weeks ago going, oh no, nurse is fired. What do we do? Who's going to coach this team? Now seemingly the, the options are left and right. Everybody just seems to be firing their coach these days, Matt. Well, man, it's crazy. Monty Williams out there, Doc Rivers out there, three of the four winning, yeah, three of the the three winningest coaches of the last three years much. all got fired with Budenholzer. Um, man, to be honest, though, like, I'll take Monty Williams. I won't take Doc Rivers <laughs> or Mike Budenholzer for the Raptors. You, you kind of feel for Monty, right? You know, the Suns were in this weird situation, right, where new owner of the team, Kevin Durant coming in, they don't meet their expectations. And as per usual, the coach has got to go and, you know, with what Devin Booker and Kevin Durant were doing, and you know, you think about how they can retool in the offseason, this team will find success if they can find the right coach. But you do got to feel bad for Monty at the end of the day. Doc Rivers, a little bit more up and down for me because obviously, you know, with the way that we've thought about Doc over the last few years, he kind he kind of deserves it with the way that he kind of just like is there in games and moments. But this loss. You do got to feel for him. With the way that James Harden and Joel Embiid absolutely did not show up, it's tough to just throw it all on Doc. Well, man, I think that's like kind of the, the story of his series is that a lot of his, you know, key star players don't show up at the right time or they get hurt. I mean, you can track it back to his Clippers days with, yeah. you know, Blake Griffin, Chris Paul getting hurt, Kawhi Leonard getting hurt. Um, so it, it's sad for him. I, I totally get that. Um, but man, like you have Joel Embiid and James Harden and they can't do anything on the court together. Like Tyrese Maxey, Tobias Harris was their best player that game. Absolutely insane. You know, it, it hurts, you know, it really does for this guy. And I mean, we talked about Bud already on that side of the coin, but you know, Nick Nurse seemingly has this pick of the litter when it, when it comes to the jobs down the line now. So it'll be interesting to see if. 
any more coaches are suddenly going to be on the chopping block come you know the the next few weeks with the rest of these series coming out but right now you feel for some of these coaches but also like i was thinking about it matt these guys get fired they still get their money right or at least a good amount of their contracts and a lot of these guys are pretty well paid for head coaches no man their contracts are guaranteed they get yeah. all of their money and sorry that i'm looking out the window there's somebody in my backyard doing something weird so yeah. man's hanging out matt's ready to just go have to throw some fisticuffs at the ass to <laughs> toronto toronto life out here but should we shift shift faces a little bit talk about the nba draft because the lottery is in a couple hours you know somebody is about to have potentially a franchise changing player added in the Wemby sweepstakes where you where's your mind matt I honestly think there are two really, you know, franchise altering players in, in Scoot Hendrickson and, and Victor Wembanyama. So I think anybody who lands in the in the top two is going to be extremely happy with with who they get. Um, to be honest, man, if we could move up into those spots, I would be absolutely thrilled. You you're saying there's a chance, one percent, baby. <laughs> yeah. Let's go get it. Well, again, like, and I as I was as I was saying to Matt as well, you know, I would take a top four. You know, yes, these top two are going to be unreal type of talents. But, you know, we, we've been talking about how we want this franchise to maybe be pushed in a certain direction, go young, build around Scotty. A top four pick, regardless of whether they're supposed to be these two amazing picks or just another top four pick, will help us maybe get a little bit younger. So, yeah, we'll be, uh, we'll be crossing our fingers really shortly in this draft. And, you know, man, a top four pick, uh, you know, Masai's proven that he's willing to go off board. Um, so I, I do trust his his opinion at the top of the draft. I mean, he did find Scotty for us. Um, and it's looking like it, it's a much better pick than the Jalen Suggs pick would have been. Yeah, I look forward to speculating, you know, next weekend and in the weeks to come about where our team is going to end up with the draft pick that we get. And it's really interesting, though, because you think about these two guys, right, with Scoot and Wemby at the top, like... It really gives me flashbacks of like Jaw and Zion vibes, right? And so I'm sitting over here. Matt loves Scoot. I haven't done enough research on these two guys, so I'm just like I've been been fed the Wemby juice over here, right? And so like this might become our new Zion Jaw situation, but not like either of us are pretty happy with the way that those two turned out, eh? <laughs> Absolutely not, man. I mean, poor Zion like has the injury history, and Jaw Morant is just kind of throwing it away at this point, it's wild. man. Um, I think we talked about it last time when he came out with that, you know, TV apology. And I was like, that was the lamest thing. And also for the NBA to suspend him for eight games, five of which he already served. Like, that yeah. was so bad. It's reminiscent. And like, again, they're making the same mistake with Miles Bridges suspending him for 30 games. But because he didn't play all season this year he's yeah. only gonna get miss get to miss the next 10 games like what is the nba doing i know adam silver is a you know players commissioner but how about we hold the players accountable for their actions and try to you know change the image of the league so that it's a good image as opposed to a wannabe gangster and domestic violence league i mean don't be the nfl that's that's the situation right and you know, it's it's tough because I, I look at it and I try to find the the answer, the reason, because there's got to be something behind it. It can't just be this or that. And like, yeah, Jaw's still a kid on the one hand, but also like the man is a young father. He's supposed to be the leader of a team. You have to learn some type of lessons or you have to have a consequence enough that makes it so there's no other choice. And it looks like the NBA might have learned from their lesson that Man, we gave this guy a little bit too much leniency because we wanted him to be part of the face of the league because we had this hope as the player as he is. And now, if they don't come out and slap him across the face, not across the wrist, across the face, the image that it puts on the NBA, like, job, ja, man, you've put yourself in a terrible spot. You would think not making an all NBA team and losing out on $40 million Seriously? would be a big enough slap in the face to stay away from guns, man. Like, just like, I don't know. It's just multiple incidents, you know, are building up. Yep. And if, if it was a one-off incident where, you know, he's in, it looks like he's in like a, a van or something with his friend and they're playing around and that gets caught on IG live. Like that's fine. But his friend even has the wherewithal to like immediately go, no, nope, we can't show that. Like, Meanwhile, he's just like holding it up. Like it's just, 
have some more common sense about the perspective. And I understand that it, it's, you know, you know, guns are a huge part of, you know, the US, but understand who you are to the public right? and understand yeah. your history with them and make a better choice. Like that's just, that's, I don't know, man. But it's also, it's also just the, like, the grow up moment. Because, Matt, let's be honest. When we're all kids, when we're all 8, 9, 10, 11, especially the world that we live in with Call of Duty and, and all these other, you know, shooter games over here, this, this is just a fact of the matter, right? But at the end of the day, like, we all would love to live our fantasy. And don't get me wrong, Matt. If you and I suddenly had a billion dollars at our disposal, a couple million dollars at our disposal, there would be parts of our personality that even you and I don't really know that would start to come out because that's just what happens. But as an adult, as a father, as what should be a leader of this team, he he needs to be better, straight up just better. And the wants of his childhood has to step back if he wants to be more than just the next Allen Iverson of the league, if he wants to be a champion, if he wants to be a true leader. So this is a big moment for Jaw, and I hope he gets the suspension he deserves, really. Yeah, I hope I hope that it, it wakes him up, man. And it's... I kind of find it unfair to compare him to AI because that whole AI situation like wasn't on him. It's not like he True. was, you know, looking for it or bringing it upon himself. And AI legitimately came from a rougher background. Yep. Jaw comes from prep schools. He comes from, you know, a two parent household uh, making really, you know, decent income in the United States. He's not, yeah. um, you know, from the ghettos. Like he's, he's a good you know upstanding like raised to be a good upstanding citizen like it, i thought his parents did a really good job with him especially right. like you see him make the league you see him you know go to murray state the way that he came out like there was a ton of love for jaw and he's just kind of he's he's squandering it man and it, it's yeah. just really sad it already cost him 40 million it could cost him another you know 500 when when it's all said and done if he doesn't straighten out and, and I'm glad you added that because for me, it was the me doing that comparison was the not having the championships, being remembered as a great player who wasn't able to be more because of this, that, and the other thing. But I completely, completely agree with you. You completely have it there with the different perspectives. But as, as a jaw fan, I'm, I'm hurting a little bit for, for this right? because you want, you want your best for your players. You want these guys to, to be amazing. And you know, we talk about how LeBron is 38. We talk about how Kevin Durant doesn't have it anymore. Steph Curry is falling apart. There are places on the Pantheon right now that are going to be opening up. And two years ago, everyone was ready to give Jaw his flowers and have him, you know, be leading out the red carpet for his, you know, ascent. And I don't, I don't know how many people are, are rooting for him right now. Let's be sure. Yeah, man. I mean, last year he was the best ticket in the NBA. The Memphis Grizzlies were yeah. one of the best stories in the NBA. And this year he kind of just wasted it. Um, he's turned at kind of everybody against them. And um, I mean, that and Dylan Brooks and their whole persona um, has, has kind of changed the narrative. But yeah, man, everybody acts tough when they're up. <laughs> everybody acts tough. When okay, so... Let's move into these series now, because I think we've 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 burned into Jaw and the Grizzlies enough. But yeah, they gotta the Grizzlies gotta figure it out, man. They they do for sure. But let's talk about right from the top, Boston Philadelphia, the series that just ended, the one that's fresh on our minds. Matt, you called it, dude. You were confident. You believed in the Celtics, and after that Game Six victory, I was sitting there going, "Man, there's no way they lose Game Seven. You've got it, dude. You've got it." <laughs> well. When they started game six and three quarters <laughs> into game six, I wasn't super worried because I saw one for 13 and I was thinking to myself, like, we're st they're still in this game. Like, Boston's in it, like, right. right there with them. But, man, was I nervous when Jason Tatum started like that. And then for him to pull it out like that, like he did, I think that is, I think that's his moment of building towards his championship. Um, I think that that's like the the next step in his you know trajectory. Losing yeah. in the finals last year, being criticized for not being the guy and not having that mentality of to just to keep to sh keep shooting, keep shooting, keep shooting, and then to you know at the end of the the game say like I just had to humbly tell myself you know yeah. I am one of the best basketball players in the NBA and he is man on the planet and it shined through man because you know in practice. He's hitting 34 out of 35 threes every right? single time in a shooting yeah. drill. And like, and it just kind of failed him and he didn't buckle. 
And that I think was just so massive. And it's, it's why I'm even more confident in Boston making the finals now, man. So the biggest thing for me, Matt, my favorite part, I was researching into this after game six and I was trying to figure out where I was. And, you know, I've been harsh to Joe Missoula on this pod recently about his decisions. Yeah. But halfway through that. the third quarter, when JT was having the troubles in a timeout, you know what he said to him? He said, go get the effing ball. Go get it, Jason. And then Jason went yeah. off and did what he did in game six. So all credit to, you know, Missoula for being the coach that he needed in that moment. And you can see this, this wheel turn with this Boston team and getting over Philadelphia. Whew, what a big moment for them, for sure. No, absolutely, man. And like, it's also the fact that, you know, Missoula put Robert Williams back into the starting lineup. You know, yep. the players really wanted it. They wanted that defensive mentality back, that identity that that made them such a daunting team last year. And it showed up the last two games, 86 and 88 points for Philadelphia. Like they could do nothing with that lineup. And yeah, it, it just makes them all the scarier, man makes them so so scary with time lord in there and yeah and derek white and brogdon off the bench like they've got a deep deep roster they really came together for the team on paper that you know everyone expected when it comes to this series and you know we'll talk about boston a little bit more but to really get into philadelphia you know to lean into the fact that you know doc is now gone you know harden who knows what's happening with harden Bro. And beat is Houston. <laughs> yeah, right. That's that's the possibility. He does like the nightclubs there. We we know that for sure. But like it's it's kind of crazy the way this team fell apart. It's kind of insane how hard Tyrese Maxey was playing. How much even Tobias, who's probably gonna get traded, who's probably gonna get forgotten about, how much Tobias actually tried at the end of this series, man. Like you feel you feel for certain parts of this Philly team. <laughs> Uh, like the thing about Tobias Harris is that everybody wants him to be, you know, that like LeBron level player, that like Jimmy Butler yep. level player. And he just isn't that. But the man is good in the playoffs. Like, especially as your third or fourth best player on a chain. Like, he should yep. be easily, easily be able to be a third or fourth best player on a championship team. And he outplayed both James Harden and Embiid in game seven. Like, for them to combine for 24 points total. Wild. And for Embiid to be just jacking up mid-range shots when you're the biggest, baddest dude on the floor. Like, you... It's... It's why people are frustrated with Joel Embiid. It's why we don't think that, you know, he's that great of a player. Yeah. Um, it's it's because he's not – he doesn't have that in him. He doesn't seem to. The actual, you know, competitive fire to do it and to not let the refs bail him out. He's looking for the refs to bail him out every single time. And he should take a lesson from Harden, man. Harden did that his entire career in Houston. And where did it get him? Right. Out in the second round or the conference finals. So you haven't even made the conference finals. You're the only MVP in league history to not make conference finals. Like, you better step your game up and figure out how to play bully ball, man. You're the <laughs> biggest dude in the NBA. You it are. It's another moment in Embiid's career where he needs to step up and learn from it, right? And, you know, Doc was brought in to get this team out of the second round. Three years later, he hasn't done it. So as much as this series isn't exactly on his fault, he didn't do the job he was supposed to do. So that's why he lost it at the end. And at least this wasn't a 3-1 loss for him, you know? At least it wasn't that addition to his legacy. But, you know, you talk about you know, the wanting to get to the basket type of situations, get the fouls. Well, that's him and James Harden's game. So this is, of course, what's going to happen. This is to be expected for this team. So that's why, you know, when Tatum did what he did, the turnaround that he had in game six, it, it broke the back. It broke the back of Philadelphia. And it's why you knew they couldn't go in to Philly and oh. win that game seven. And I love that Tatum hunted Embiid. He was like 24 points, four yep. for four from deep, like just hunting Embiid on the defensive end. And Embiid had nothing. And that's why, like, man, I, I, I think Jason Tatum might be currently the best player in the NBA. I think that if you were to give me a player to start a franchise with, and you, you know I love Giannis. You know how much I love Giannis. 
being being a Greek kid, you know, my papu having the same name as him, yeah. and like knowing him from the draft when he went fifteenth overall, and and getting a Greek newspaper cutout of Giannis, like, I think I'd take Tatum, man, and just because he gets threes, like he is just a monster when the game is on the line. He knows how to how to deliver. Really, I think he does. I mean, we talk about how you know it's turned into a wings league. You know the the Kawhi archetypes, the LeBron archetypes. Tatum is the shooting version of that wing who has all those capabilities, and it does feel like it's their time. So we'll come we'll come back to Boston in a bit when we, we want to talk about Boston Miami at this point because yeah, it, it does kind of seem almost inevitable for this team. But do you want to stay in the East? Do you want to talk about that Miami Knicks series, or do you want to flip the other side? Oh man, I will would love to talk about Jimmy Butler. And the Miami Heat, with their seven undrafted players, yeah. making it to another conference finals. I thought they were dead in the water. You know, before the season started, I think I p- predicted that they were going to be one of the bottom eight teams. Or, yeah, I thought they were going to be even maybe out of the playoffs. And they they proved me right through the regular season. They scratched and clawed and scratched and clawed into yeah. that. And... But Jimmy Butler in the playoffs is a whole different animal. This guy's playing on one leg. <laughs> Watching him walk into these games in the tunnel with his, like, limp and yeah, then yeah, go yeah, out yeah. there and just dominate. Like, this Sorry. man is just special. And, like, uh, did they make a trade at the All-Star break? Because they've been, like, a top 10 offense and defense since the All-Star break. They've been good in preparation leading up to it. So I don't know what Spole did or what exactly happened, but... Everything just kind of came together for this team. And, you know, I will say I do have to give Kyle Lowry his flowers. He was big at the end to help close out this New York Nick team. And, you know, we love the Grode over here. So I, I got to have his moments. And I'd love for that guy to, to make another championship, to get another conference final win. You know, that would be big for Kyle Lowry in his career. But it really just comes down to Jimmy, man. Jimmy was that dog. He made Julius Randle feel, it super, like, you know, insignificant in this series Absolutely. right and as much as rj barrett played great he really did play good in this series and has played good through these playoffs you know jalen brunson can't do enough you need julius randall to actually show up and he just really didn't in this series yeah julius randall unfortunately hits a lot of tough shots and they just weren't falling for him uh in the pl- in this playoffs and i find that rj is really good when jalen brunson's out there and has someone to play off of but when he's by himself trying yeah. to create his own shot he's just he doesn't feel athletic enough against the rest of the nba at his position yeah. to be dominant because what he's really good at is drawing some contact and getting to the free throw line and i think that like that's why he started slow as a, as a rookie because he was so small and again he's only 22 so he could still fill out more still become a little bit more athletic yeah um but then he gets his his free throw rhythm going which which helps his jumper because he, he got he's got that feel for the basketball um so i just i think he's he's not he's never gonna be there i think he'll definitely be an all-star in his career but I don't think he'll ever be like a top 20, 15 player like people predicted when he was coming out of the draft. I mean, the Knicks fans are real happy they got Brunson then because you mentioned you mentioned how you know RJ doesn't look the same. The Knicks basketball looks dog water when Jalen Brunson isn't <laughs> controlling the water. I'm sorry. Like, if he's not in charge of the ball, there's a reason he played 48 minutes in one of those games that they won. Because that's what it took. Buddy. That's what it took for him to be in charge. That's just Knicks basketball, unfortunately. You know, they they just weren't enough. And and Miami Spo, you know, Bam was great in this series. I'm hoping that he can keep this up to maybe, you know, do something against the Celtics. But yeah, Knicks were just outclassed, man, unfortunately for them. Jalen Brunson executes plays like a like a robot, like a cyborg, man. Um, it's just unbelievable. Um, I also love that. You could even tell at the end of the um, Heat Knicks game in Game Six. Yeah, the league was trying to get a Game Seven. There was some horrendous calls when the game should have been over with a minute left to get the Knicks back within striking distance. And I'm so glad that it panned out for the Heat to win. Um, 
You can definitely see those story writers coming in. The basketball gods making Brunson have that turnover at the end of that game was the answer to the potential that horrible call. Like, uh, uh, but but seriously, because Brunson was on, man, he was so on, and that was such a fluke moment. And it was like, even he was just like (gasps) something like just gonna throw that out there. You know what I mean? So, but yeah, tough, tough end for the Knicks. You know, I, I did, I will say. I mentioned how they were going to get probably blown out in Game 5 and the fans deserved better. They got a good Game 5, so, you know, the the Knicks at least showed up for that game for their fan base. No, man, you were saying that they, they should. I was saying that they were probably going to get blown out, but, hey, <laughs> they, they did play well. Um, unlike Phoenix, man, who just really, really didn't have it, back-to-back losses by over 25 mm-hmm. points at home, in elimination games. It's crazy. Ooh. It's crazy that they went out in the same way. I'm sad that we don't have as as an iconic picture as we do the Luca face picture. But yeah, Phoenix, man, absolutely crumbling at the seams in the finale. And you feel for Kevin Durant because like, man, those old legs, like he just had no lift in those last games. And like we mentioned, the second Devin Booker is not hot anymore that series is over and we watched it happen and you have to give credit to the nuggets obviously because they were the deeper team they were the better team they've had more consistency as a squad but yeah rough rough finish for phoenix it's what happens when you have to play your two best players every game 48 minutes for two rounds it's in a in a grueling grueling type of basketball environment they just kept playing their guys 48 minutes and hope that that would be enough and it it isn't you know and poor kevin durant like had no you're right had no lift um and to go out that way this year and to get swept last year his legacy is really getting you know kind of beaten down he had that one out of the last three postseasons that we've seen him without the golden state warriors he's had that one series where if he had you know size 12 shoes as opposed to 14 he probably would have won the nba championship and it's a whole different world but yeah man it's getting tarnished out here and and yeah he's going to be remembered very very differently if he can't pull another chip in uh for the rest of his career it's it's the volatility of it right just the fact of the matter that anything can happen and and that's why the nuggets are on such a good run right now because matt they've been healthy they've been happy they've been chugging along all season they've had that continuity which the past three seasons they haven't been able to have and that's why man that's why you were so confident of the nuggets at the beginning of the playoffs it's why i'm so happy you know having been a pocket nuggets fan the past few years seeing this come together and Jokic, man i love that they interview Jokic, and he's like yo you got three days off what are you doing he's like my horse is racing on saturday my buddy's racing his horse on sunday so i'll be in the hotel you know in the hot tub maybe watching horse racing and it's like this guy is one of the most wholesome dudes on the whole planet when when his basketball career ends you're not going to be able to find him when they have to go tell him he made the hall of fame he's going to be in the middle of nowhere in serbia and they're going to have to you know backcountry under the mountains for a day to come find this guy you have to love Nikola Jokic and the superstar and like the wholesome image that he is he's, come on man and he's absolutely phenomenal absolutely phenomenal i mean he outplayed kevin durant and devin booker um he is you know he's an engine man and to think that they almost kept you know yusuf nurkic (laughs) over him is wild what a play could you imagine if damian lillard had nikola Jokic on his team that would have been a championship squad but they made the right choice they kept him yeah i think though they're coming up against their biggest their biggest test here man because you know LeBron handled his business. Him and AD, they Man. made it. Oh, the only crazy. thing that I have, the only thing that I have to say about Lakers Golden State, you know, credit to LeBron, like we mentioned at the beginning, and credit to Anthony Davis for absolutely stepping up on Steph Curry when they were hunting him, because that's a lot of what happened at the end of that series was Anthony Davis getting pulled into the pick and roll, getting isolated against Steph Curry, and him playing great defense on him, right? That comment combined with Darvin Ham absolutely understanding his team and absolutely taking advantage of his role players. Yeah, man, Nuggets are in for a battle with this Lakers squad. These are like 
this has to be the more interesting series of the two in, in all honesty obviously oh, yeah. you know what, what like do you have anything else you want to say when it comes to that lakers game well the fact that you know lebron hunted steph on the defensive end True. the fact that um you know steph curry no he did not get a ton of help and it's it, it's you know reminiscent of when lebron didn't have enough help to beat him and everybody's kind of letting steph off nobody let lebron off no. Man, like, if you're going to be a top 10, top 12 player of all time, you have to be held accountable. And he just, he didn't have enough in the tank to beat them. And he didn't have enough to go nuclear like he did against Sacramento in, in yep. Game 7. And so, like, Ugh. it sucks. But, like, wow, man, Jordan Poole, Clay Thompson, I don't know what you do with either of those guys because... Obviously, you don't want to break Steph and Clay up, but you might have you to. Might and have to. and Jordan Poole is was borderline unplayable through the the end of that series. So Draymond looked good though. Like surprise to me, I thought he was absolutely washed, but he looked you know like the best out of the four of them. Golden State. I has mean some, the three. Yeah. Golden State has some wild questions to figure out. They've got some interesting situations to see. But yeah, man, all credit to LeBron getting through kind of insane so let's talk let's talk la denver because you know i, I want to talk about that series i'm really excited about this series i can't wait to watch this game tonight i always going out for dinner right now and i'm gonna be like 6 30 6 30 is when the game starts you go come on let's go let's go and, no i'm just i'm obviously i'm messing but like you mentioned how this is the big test for denver now and I really believed that, you know, this was before Tatum did what Tatum did. I really believed that this year was going through the best big left in the in the championship, right? I really believed that. And I look at AD and Jokic now and the battle that the two of them are going to have. We're in for a treat because the IQ of Jokic and the defensive prowess that AD has had in the past few rounds. Oh, baby, it's going to be a fun series. Yeah, man, I think I think you're just off. It's not the battle of who's the best big gonna win the NBA championship, but it's you know it's been a center's league for the past like three ish years with you know Giannis, Embiid, and Jokic dominating the MVP. Yeah. It's gonna it's gonna be that conversation of can the wing really beat the big or does the big beat the wing? Yeah. I think that's how it's gonna end up. But in this one, you're 100 percent right. It's all on AD to guard Nikola Jokic. If he can stay out of foul trouble, if he can stay in front of him and limit him, the the Lakers have a chance. Um, but I think the Nuggets, you know, definitely have a very deep roster, and it yeah. does come down to those auxiliary pieces. Um, you know, is Aaron Gordon, you know, Bruce Brown, Michael Porter Jr., uh, KCP, like, are they going to outplay Reeves, D'Lo, um, you know, Vando, Rui, Schroeder, and, and those guys? I think that they're more consistent on the Nuggets side, yeah. whereas the Lakers, I think, have more guys that can have a game and actually make real solid contributions, go for 20 like Austin Reeves did in that game six, um, hit that half-court shot to you know ig ignite the crowd and, and right. get it going. So, yeah, man, I, it's going to be a battle. It's going to be a war, and I see it playing out, I, I, you know, I kind of see Denver winning it, but I would not be shocked if LA came through in the end. Well, that's, LeBron. that's the fun of it too, right? It is LeBron and it is what those, you know, four superstars, two and a half, three and a half superstars. If Murray can do what Murray has done in the past, he can be considered a superstar in this series. Eh, right. He's kind of on yeah, the so. teetering of it. Right. But yeah, it's going to be really fun. And we have to credit the coaches too. We have to credit what Darvin Ham is going to do. We have to credit what Malone is going to do because they know their rosters at this point, right? And we're in for a really fun series. And I can't, we can't be, like there has to be a chess match here, right? You know, you think about the moves that have already been made by both of these organizations. And obviously Denver hasn't had to flex as much because of how confident they are how much more static they are not having to change as much as what the lakers have done but yeah it's gonna be a lot of fun i'm really excited to see who's gonna step up you know can lonnie walker have another game wouldn't that be amazing can austin reeves keep playing because let's not forget that austin reeves is in for quite possibly a massive payday a massive payday matt because i don't think you would offer him four years 90 million dollars i don't think you would but somebody would. Yeah, this little bean is yeah. here. Yeah, she's cute, man. She, she um, wants food. 
it's it's going to be it's going to be intense man it's going to be a a great great series it's also going to come down to how they play you know um LA's been getting a lot of teams that switch the pick and roll right. uh, with AD and LeBron, and and Denver's not. Denver's gonna not switch the pick and roll, which is gonna allow LeBron a little bit more space coming downhill um, on the offensive end, and I think that you know could be the difference if LeBron can hold up and LeBron can keep pushing and and keep attacking the rim which we haven't really seen through the first two rounds because they've been switching. He's, he's played a little bit more off ball. He's right. he's only come in through spurts. I think he needs to really dominate the series, which, you know, might not bode well for their chances if they make the finals. Well, you don't want him to wear right. it down. Yeah, he's been so flexible through the, throughout the playoffs right now, and it'll really come down to where he can find his... Because he's obviously the most versatile player of any of them, right? Like Aaron Gordon could say he's got versatility in terms of the same type of positional role that LeBron has, but in terms of the capabilities of the roles, it's not even close. So I do agree that, yeah, once again, the Lakers are relying on a 38-year-old LeBron to find the way for him to have the ultimate impact on a series. But again, this is LeBron James. This is the GOAT of our generation who, if anyone, if anyone's going to find a way to flex through four series as potentially four completely different roles, you got to bet on LeBron, my guy. Absolutely, my friend. I think I think if he wins, it is a no doubt brainer. If they win the championship, even if he doesn't get finals MVP, it's a no doubt brainer that he is the greatest of all time. I mean, and I will argue that till the day I die. I mean, I'm already on that side. So would this be and, his greatest championship of the five if they can do it? No, nah, 2016 when he came back from 3 1 is definitely the because they beat the 73 win Warriors, man. Like Oh, I know, I know. I just that that's the conversation right now. People are like, if LeBron can do it, this would be the most impressive. And like, yes, they were two and ten. Yes, this, that, and the other thing. But like the guy has A D. What he did against that Warriors team was disgusting. Unreal. Unfair. Like it's kind of funny though that like LeBron's greatest championship also helps uh with Michael Jordan's legacy because he still has the 95 96 Bulls as the greatest team of all time which would have been supplanted by yeah. that Golden State team like it's just it's kind of it's like a weird way to that it all ties in man but it's, it's I think I think we we've got this it's going to be a great series it's going to be a war um I'll probably take Denver in 7 um but I again game 7 LeBron throw on the cape for one game I could be wrong. You know he's never lost a game seven. No, he's like fifteen well, or no in game sevens. Try to take Denver in six. Then this is why I was like, I'm not taking, I'm not putting a, a number on this series yet because yeah, it's kind of insane. But also, is this the conversation of he's never lost in the first round, which held up until last year, right? Like certain numbers are meant to fall unless you're Jordan and you say, yeah, I got six championships, I ain't going back to the finals. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to tarnish that, but. <laughs> This is this is the weird situation that we're in when it comes to LeBron, but I think we've we've hit enough over there. Let's let's move to Miami, Boston. Let's talk about this last series, the other side of the coin. A team that everyone was like, "Oh yeah, Boston, they'll make the Eastern Conference Finals, no problem." And then Miami, the eighth seed, just hanging out, doing their thing. You gotta love what Jimmy has been able to do this playoffs. And like the ESPN like percentage predictions to make the finals, ninety seven percent for Boston, three percent for Miami, like wow. In every every matchup, you would think Boston has the edge. Um, even even playoff Jimmy, I would still go with Tatum. I mean, Game Seven um, Tatum can take playoff Jimmy. That's for sure from what we just saw. And. And he's younger, and he's not hurt like Jimmy is. Yep. Um, and I take Brown over Bam Adebayo as my second star. I take the rest of the roster for Boston over the rest of the roster for Miami easily. The only thing that can make this a series is Eric Spolstra. If he comes through, which he, he's consistently come through in his career as a coach. I mean, they have yeah. always had you know, ability to make the playoffs and go deep in the playoffs when they have, like, a, you know, a centerpiece. And three out of four conference finals with Jimmy Butler and a bunch of undrafted guys and, like, a young Bam out of bio in the, right. in the first one. Like, it is kind of wild. And it might be the biggest mismatch. Joe Missoula, the rookie head coach. Yeah. The, 
you okay. know, might, still, might get outmatched here. Still kind of insane that we've seen this matchup between these teams three of the last four years, but Boston has had a different coach every <laughs> single time. But Spolstra's still hanging out. Man, you're calling it, right? Because, like, you know, Matt, I like to think of myself as a pretty well-versed NBA fan. I know a lot of players. I know who Max Struess and Gabe Vincent are, but without Spolstra, nobody's expecting them to do what they've done after Tyler Hero goes down. Tyler, like, Absolutely. There's, there's so many ways to look at it, but at the end of the day, Spo has figured it out with this squad, and if Jimmy can keep doing what he's doing, I mean, the world is their oyster. Anything is possible for this team, but Boston should win. That has to be oh. prefaced. And after what Tatum's done, after the possibilities of what, you know, their center rotations can do, the veteran presence of Al Horford, like, you're right, Matt. It does seem like it's Boston time, but I just, I don't want to bet against Spolstra just yet, man, because he's making everyone look foolish. Man, and, you know, you want Kyle Lowry to, to get to the NBA championship oh, again. And, so true. Um, I, I totally get it. And, and Bam to continue on this trajectory and actually fulfill, like, the promise that everybody saw in him when they did go to that first finals. Um, or, I guess, the, the only finals together, because they've only gone to the conference finals. Uh, yeah, true. But, man, I just, I can't, it's, it's hard for me to bet against Boston, man. I think... You know, Time Lord's going to give Bam a lot of problems. So is Al Horford. Yeah. And then I think Tatum and Brown, you can throw multiple guys at Jimmy just on a consistent basis. And like after Jimmy and Bam, it's real thin on the Miami side. And I know if Spolstra pulls this out, man, it will be a magic trick. Like, absolute. I mean, this is this is where. You know, you think about the championships that Miami got, right? And you think about what they lived through and what Spolster has done since then. Like, this is his crowning achievement with Jimmy, if they can pull it off. And also, like, the other side of the coin is, like, we want that bubble final. We want that bubble repeat, baby. We want the validation because of how funny it would be. You know, I love that we were here with these four teams, healthy, pretty much healthy, all of these four teams, being able to see what would happen with fans blah 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 doesn't matter these four teams have Le fought Mickey yeah exactly these four teams have fought to be here where they are right now and we're in for some epic epic matchups to come no absolutely man and, and i think the bubble's already been validated like these are the four teams that were in the finals last year yes the rosters have changed over somewhat but the main stars are the same AD and LeBron, Jokic and Murray, yep. uh, Kate, or, um, Tatum and Brown, and um, man, Bam and Jimmy. Jimmy. <laughs> Just Jimmy. Jimmy and so, Spo. Jimmy and Spo. It's, it's the same, man. And it's it's been validated. And these, you know, Mickey Mouse championship jokes and the, you know, there were no fans. And yeah. I think that it made it harder. They, they were the number one seed, and they didn't get a home playoff game the entire time. So this would just be absolute unreal validation, especially if, you know, they do it on the road the whole way. Like, it's right. crazy. But, again, I'm still sticking with my with my Denver-Boston finals pick. I think that's where it's going to head up. Um, I feel like everybody knows kind of where I'm leaning if they've listened to the podcast. Uh, but we'll pick it right before. Man, you go, go with the easy pick. Let's pick the top seeds, the home court advantage seeds. Seven eights. There's no way they make it through. Look, either way, all four of these teams have fantastic stories. And that's what you got to ask for at this time of the year. I was, I, you know, I was hoping that we were going to see Denver and Sacramento here because those were my baby teams over on this side. But <laughs> alas, it, it wasn't to be. You know, you brought up the beam earlier and you brought up Sacramento and it made me have a little tear inside remembering where we were just a few weeks ago. But it's been good, man. The playoffs have been great. We've had some epic moments. Like to think that we're about to have Jimmy and, and, and Tatum potentially start to go like this against each other. Let alone Again. what we're about to see on the Western side with this LeBron and Jokic and everyone else situation. Like, there's some great players left. There's some great basketball. And, like, I love it, man. Final Four, this is, this is the best time of the year for basketball. No, abs absolutely, man. It's the best time of the year for basketball. All right. Um, 
my my prediction for tonight, man, is I'm 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 gonna go with the Lakers. You know, they've they've won two game ones in a row. Um, I think that they they really need this one if they have any chance at, at making you know the NBA Finals and winning the series. Yeah. Um. So I think LeBron knows that, and I think he comes out and he, you know, has like one of his games where he's he's putting in that effort for most of the game, not you know, disappearing in between. <laughs> I'm kind of glad you're taking this one because, you know, when I was looking at this series, I'm like, one of two things happens, right? Either the Lakers have to come out and they have to win one of these two games, or it has to be the, we'll win our two games at home, you'll win your two games at home, we'll try to figure out how we get game six. And that's where I'm going with things, right? I'm expecting Denver to get that 2-0 start. But you're right. If LeBron wants to, you know, keep his young legs, if they want to have a chance, Darvin Ham better have some really interesting rotation set up for them to try to steal game one. Because if they don't win game one, game two, that's a harder question, I think, to steal for sure. No, absolutely. Especially, you know, I think they're going to give it their all tonight. So if they don't win tonight, they're going to be, <laughs> yeah, pretty done for game two, especially in the mile high. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you could be right, man. The 2-0 prediction lead. So one of us is going to be right next week, at least. Well, unless uh, they, they win game two. But <laughs> that's that's going to happen, bro. You know it's going to happen. We've, we got we got the firing of Doc right before we started recording, which never happens. Something always happens right after. So this is how the curse gets us this week, man. It gets both of us wrong. But <laughs> right. anything else, my dude? No, nah, man, we're good. You're good to wrap this up. Perfect. Well, thanks. Yeah, I know. She's hungry. She's staring at me. So thanks, everybody, for being here. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook at The Board Sports. Like, subscribe. Give us that thumbs up. Check out TheBoardSports.net for new episodes and blog posts. And we'll talk to you next time.